Penny says self-defense. Had to protect myself, had to protect passengers by restraining the man, didn't mean to kill him. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg doesn't buy it. Charged him with second degree manslaughter. I said murder. I misspoke. It is manslaughter and it's a big difference. Why? Murder requires, no matter the degree, an intent to kill. Manslaughter does not. Manslaughter can require, certainly in the second degree, reckless conduct, which means what? Conduct that is risky to the point that you should have known it could have committed serious uh, damage to someone or killed them. Is that the case here? If convicted, he would face a maximum of 15 years in prison. But there's a question as to whether or not a grand jury will even indict. His defense attorney is Thomas Kniff, and he joins me right now. Counselor, thank you for taking the opportunity. Thanks for bringing me on, Chris. I appreciate it. Uh, there are two things I want to do. I want to vet the analysis of right and wrong here. I also want to vet uh, who this kid is. And let's start with that. 24-year-old, he's always called a Marine. And I respect the service, um, but I take, I, I, I take a little caution with it because it seems like that is being used to paint him as something, like he's a trained killer because he's a Marine. Um, how would you describe your client to us in terms of how he came to this situation? Yeah, I mean, look, obviously, uh, as a veteran myself, uh, I, I respect uh, anyone's service. Uh, I respect my client's service. But, you know, the reality is that whether he was a former Marine or not, uh, he's an individual who was put in a, a incredibly difficult situation, the type of situation that really anybody who lives in New York City certainly anyone who rides the subway can relate to, because we've all seen situations like this. They become increasingly common in the last few years, as when you point out, you know, our, our sense of law and order seems, seems to have just eroded. Um, and, and, you know, he's someone who was confronted with, with a situation and took, did what was reasonable to protect himself and protect others. So, you know, he doesn't have to be a hero in order to enjoy the presumption of innocence. He doesn't have to be a hero, uh, you know, in order to get due process of law. The, the right of self-defense is, is, is a product of our, our English common law. It's older than, the, uh, than our legal system itself. Right. All right, so the first uh, line of analysis is he did what he was trained in the Marines to do, which is choke somebody to death. And that's what he used here, and he should have known that that's what it was going to do because that's what he was trained to do. Fair? Uh, no, it's, it's absolutely not fair. He, was, he wasn't choking anyone. What he was doing was he was restraining someone. He was restraining someone who was acting erratically, restraining someone who was menacing other individuals on the train, and threatening other individuals with threats that could be interpreted as not just threats to do violence, but threats to take life. Uh, you know, wh whether well, let's, uh, let's Jordan unpack that, Neely subjectively counselors. intended them that way. Sure. Let's, yeah. let's unpack that. There are two elements. One, how do you know uh, that he needed to act the way he did? Uh, how do you know that Neely was threatening anybody in a way that made this reasonable? Yeah, Chris, what I can say is, you know, first of all, the media reports on this on this point have been essentially uncontroverted. That um, that, that Mr. Neely entered the train and, among other things, said that, you know, if you don't acquiesce to my demands, I'm ready to go to jail for the rest of my life. Those who practice law in New York, those who live in New York, know that there really is only one way to incur a life sentence in this state, uh, and that's to take another life. Now. I'm not saying that that's what Jordan Neely intended. I'm not saying that he subjectively, uh, you know, believed those things when he said it. But the issue is not that. The issue is how that would be perceived for a reasonable person in an environment where there is no off-ramp. You know, the opportunity for de-escalation, the opportunity for avoidance that we've all pr have practiced at times in our lives if we lived in New York City, because there's not one of us who hasn't been, you know, harassed or accosted, uh, at least verbally, by an emotionally disturbed person on the street. You know, you put your head down, you avoid eye contact, and you walk the other way. That's simply not a practical option in a confined 
subterranean container, which is what a New York City subway car is. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.